this is Joseph R. Biden, the president, talking to Cal Penn, who is most famous for being in the Harold and Kumar movies. And the president tells a story about his epiphany on when he knew that he was in favor of gay marriage. I'm curious what your evolution was like on marriage equality and what the federal government might be able to do to protect LGBTQ Americans, especially trans kids who are dealing with all these regressive state laws that are popping up right now. I can remember exactly where my uh, epiphany was. Okay. I hadn't thought much about it, to tell you uh -huh. the truth. And I was, a, I was a senior in high school, and my dad was dropping me off. I remember about to get out of the car, and I looked to my right, and two well-dressed men in suits kissed each other. I mean, they gave each other a kiss. And I'll never forget, I turned and looked to my dad. He said, Joey, it's simple. They love each other. It's simple. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> it's simple. They love each other. And it's never been... It's, it's, it's never been... It's he's, never, having, he's, having hmm. real, he's having a lot of trouble coming up with ways to corroborate with, the lie. With the rest of the story. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, God, what did we talk about before this interview? Now, when Cal Penn asked him, you know, I want to know about your evolution on gay marriage, I think what he meant was, you know, when you were the vice president, you were still against gay marriage. Can you talk to me about how this happened? And then he's like, oh, it was when it was in 1961. That was when I knew that this was okay. And Cal Penn's like, what? Yeah. That's his what face? Surely that had to be going through his head. Cal Penn. Because Obama was against gay marriage in 2008. Cal Penn was there. He left the TV show House to work in the Obama administration, which was officially against gay marriage. And Biden's sitting here telling him, who was there, that he had always been in favor of it. Just, yeah, you know, it's simple. You can just it's simple. It's crazy how you can revise history. Try to avoid nuance, Senator. Do you support straight. gay marriage? No, Barack Obama nor I support redefining from a from a civil side what constitutes marriage. We do not support that. That is basically a decision to be able to be left to the face and people who practice their face the determination what you call it. The bottom line, though, is I can't believe the American people can't see through this. We already have a law. The Defense of Marriage Act, where we've all voted, not where I voted and others said, look, marriage is between a man and a woman, and states must respect that. Nobody's violated that law. There's been no challenge to that law. Why do we need a constitutional amendment? Marriage is between a man and a woman. Awkward, right? You would think. I wanted to double check, though, the 1996 Defense of Marriage Act, which, just to make sure, Biden did, in fact, vote uh, for that <laughs> as well. But anyway, it was when he was in high school and he saw these two well-dressed men kissing. It's simple. Yes. So now you have to believe that Biden was in favor of gay marriage, knew that it was right, knew that it was two people who loved each other, and voted against it or in favor of outlawing it or whatever, his whole political career, so he could stay in power. And so, therefore, he's a person who, even though he knew it was wrong, he did whatever he needed to do to stay in power. The, the truth of the answer is, well, I, became, I became in favor when the polls shifted. Mm -hmm. 2012. The willingness to just, the problem is he'll outright lie about this. And all the politicians, a lot of politicians do this. He'll outright lie to someone, first off, who was in the Obama administration. He's talking to, the, to a person. Um, he was like a communications director or something, something like that. Like that. Right? I, yeah, I can't yeah. remember exactly what it was. I don't think he was there for long. Um, he'll outright lie to that person and on TV, and they'll have a real conversation about a fake situation that didn't happen. And everyone is going to act like it's the truth, even though everyone knows it isn't the truth. Afro man getting sued by the Ohio sheriff's deputies who raided his home. So they raided his home. Um, let me tell you why they are now suing him. Afterwards, that's great. Ohio based rap artist, his real name, by the way, is Joseph Edgar Foreman, Afro Man, Joe Foreman, is being sued by seven officers with the Adams County Sheriff's Office for using footage of their 2022 search on his home to make and promote new music. <laughs> now, he used, just so you know, it's not 
I, from, it's my understanding. There's not the body cam f- footage. It's he had security cameras in his home and he's using his own security camera footage in his videos for the raid. That is, that's my understanding of the matter from, from what I can tell. Okay. The officer has accused Foreman's use of their images and likeness as a malicious act that tarnished their reputation and humiliated them, according to the complaint. Maybe you shouldn't do things that are humiliating. (laughs) The lawsuit stems from a search of his home in August 2022, which was conducted with a lawfully issued search warrant. Following the raid, seven members of law enforcement involved say that Foreman used the video recordings to make music and music videos About the search, they're suing him for unauthorized use of an individual's persona, invasion of privacy by misappropriation, and invasion of privacy by false light publicly, among other things. Defendants' actions, they say, were willful, wanton, malicious, and done with conscious or reckless disregard for the rights of the plaintiffs. The officers claim that the post led to them being subjected to ridicule, and it's made it more difficult and even more dangerous for them to do their jobs. The plaintiffs, the officers, have suffered damages, including all profits derived from and attributable to defendants' unauthorized use of plaintiffs' personas and have suffered humiliation. It's funny, their damages they've suffered are roughly equal to all of the profits that came in from the video. That's convenient. (laughs) Just saying. Uh, Can't make this stuff up. And have suffered humiliation, ridicule, mental distress, embarrassment, and loss of reputation. I was going to fight this law, <laughs> this lawsuit, but then I got I. Listen, there may in fact be laws I about. I give a shit about the police, but then I got I. That's all I got. All right. Um, problem is. I don't know what the laws are as far as using a video of another person in your video that's going to make money. I don't know what the rules are. There could very well be rules against this. But in my opinion, police officers, when the police department, when the government comes and raids your home, and from what I can tell, they didn't, doesn't seem like they found much. One of the things they were looking for was a, a suspicion of kidnapping. I don't, I don't know that they found much. Um, did he kidnap weed plants from Colorado? When the government gives, now they say, well, there's a lawful warrant. Okay, so when the government gives itself permission to break into your house and break your stuff, he also alleges that they stole money from him. Um, you know what? Even if there is a law saying that you can't use someone's, someone's likeness, I think that they should call it even. Well, first of all, you you're know? a public servant. Yeah. So that's that's got to be different. You're in my home, and I have camera footage why can't you use it i don't know i wonder how this is going to go i i'm interested this is going to be very interesting to follow up on dumbly number two is a group called it's the guns mm. so we have the shooting we've been talking about all week here in nashville right here close to home number two is going to be people blaming the guns we'll have some videos we'll have some tweets let's show what we got here's the first one posted Saying uh, from Sawyer Hackett, I don't know who that is. Here's Tennessee Governor Bill Lee three years ago next week announcing permitless open carry of firearms. And then they post uh, some misinformation, just incorrect information, probably right after it happened. At least five children and three adults were shot in his state today. Somehow, I don't even have to play the video. It's just him uh, announcing that they're going to have permitless Mm -hmm. open carry. Um, in, in what way is this tied to this shooting? Can someone tell me? Yeah. I mean, it's his fault. It is because if the shooter would not have been able to open carry those weapons from her car to the doors that she shot through, this never would have happened. No, she would have never tried it. No. Yeah. That that kind of reaching for stupid things to say. Is why this makes it into dumb bleep. Mm-hmm. Next thing, we're going to play a few clips from The View. Oh, yes. First thing, Whoopsie Goldberg is wearing a shirt that says Thoughts and Prayers. And it's crossed out. And at the bottom, it says Policy and Change. So no Thoughts and Prayers. Not a thing. Policy and Change. We are uh, the Almighty. We can fix all of these things. Uh, so that goes to part of it. Uh, let's play a few clips 
I would be willing to say, why don't we put in place trainings, background checks, mental health screenings to be able to have one? Why are we compromised? It, well, why it, are we, and you, know what I'm, you know what I'm tired of? I, I don't mean to, no, to no. be rude to, to, to cut you off. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of trying to find a way to justify mm -hmm. you being able to keep 75 guns in your house. I am tired <laughs> of trying to figure out a way well, and, to, to say, listen, we have rules and regulations. The Constitution is very clear. Scalia changed the meaning of what yes, the Constitution says. Well, and, and Scalia changed it. And okay, there's one. He t I didn't know that. Yeah. Scalia changed it? He wrote it. He wrote it then. When a judge does something you don't like, that means that that judge changed the meaning of what the Constitution says because you know exactly what the Constitution says and means based on your uh, stupid emotions. That's so that you have. Yeah. Here's Joy Behar. Also, I love when she's like, I don't mean to be rude and interrupt. <laughs> but, I, but I'm going to be rude and but, interrupt. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> yeah. It's a, she said with all due respect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, thank you, Joe Biden, for trying to, to put the, the ban on those assault weapons, which I should also point out that after a mass shooting in Australia in 1996, if they enacted a man mandatory gun buyback and collected 700,000 privately owned guns. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Since then, there has been just one mass shooting, which was four people, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and gun homicides have decreased by 60%. It can be done. It can be done. I wish they would stop jumping around and dancing around everything, but the guns, it's well, this, the guns. The, it's the guns. It is the guns. The thing that I found really annoying about this, and I still have to get some more data from Australia, but here's an important thing to note. Before, earlier in this clip, or not in this clip, but in the previous clip, they used the 130 mass shootings statistic. I think 132 is the number that we saw the other day. And then they talk about Australia and how they've only had one mass shooting. Now, oddly enough, the one mass shooting in Australia is that number comes from them counting mass shootings as four or more people killed indiscriminately in a public setting uh, by someone that they didn't know, not domestic dispute, not criminal activity, not gang violence. It's the violence project number. The true stat, I would the, say. The stat. And so that is true that of those, Australia has had one of them. But earlier they said the U.S. had had 132 using a completely different metric for measuring mass shootings. And if you use the same Australia metric, well, then they would have said three. Now that's for this year. They would have said three for the United States instead of 132. They're literally using different metrics between the two. I also read some interesting articles from Newsweek and a bunch of other places saying Australia actually has more guns now than they used to. They're just legal guns. They did the, the forced buyback. Uh, but if you look at the, the gun imports in Australia, it's actually way more. Uh, yeah. than it was before that. And they still have mass shootings. It's just a lot of the, the criminal activity and stuff, which is what's included in the U.S.'s 132 number. And also, I'll, this is a point I was going to bring up. T-Dub also brought it up in the live group. Join gmail.com. He said they also put people in cells uh, in camps in Australia during yeah, COVID. They did. Yeah. That's another really good point. So yes. it's not... Uh, he said a lot of folks are against gun regu regulations because they won't work. I'm against them because they will. Look at Australia. Their gun laws worked. They took away the guns, and then they were able, during COVID, to lock you in your homes or take you to prison, essentially, if you didn't comply with government uh, law. That was wrong, by the way. Government yeah. regulation, that ended up being wrong. So there, there's, a, there's a sense to that, too. It's like, okay, look what happens in his, look, look what happens throughout history when they do actually take the guns away. It's like, okay, maybe we saved, let's say, a thousand kids, which a thousand kids. I don't want any kids to be murdered or harmed in any way. Mm -hmm. I have a kid of my own. But then how many millions of people died after that? Yeah. You know, how it's many? Just like deciding you're going to stop people from dying from COVID but not pay attention to all of the other societal factors that could end up leading to people dying when you do that, mm -hmm. like unemployment and deaths of despair, things like that. Yeah. Uh, one more clip here from The View, and then I promise. Not to mention that, yeah, Australia has the population of New York City. <laughs> it's, uh, it's 30 million, I think, in Australia, yeah. so more like California is the, uh, is the number. All right. There are certain guns you have. I don't have a tank. Right. I can't go and buy a tank. Right. 
I can't buy yeah, can. a can. flamethrower. Can you buy that? The can you thing, buy I can't that? buy any of those. None of the AR-15s have no use in normal daily None. life. None. None. No, None. And again. I don't say give up all your guns. I don't know why you have to have 50, 11 of them, but maybe you do. But I want to know that you've got them because I want to be sure that I'm aware of what's going on in my periphery. And if you're not willing to do that, then we all have a problem. Telling people to put our arm... Okay, <clears throat> that's enough. A few things there. The tank, you can't get tanks, right? I mean, yeah. is that... Okay, flamethrower, you can... You can buy flamethrowers. I don't know who needs to know this. Uh, apparently, Joe Biden needs to know this also because he just said this yesterday, the day before, or whenever it was, that you couldn't buy a flamethrower. Those are literally, those are illegal, I believe, in California. And I'm going to name another state. I think maybe it's Maryland. You can definitely buy a not a flamethrower. You can buy those. You can also buy flamethrowers. <laughs> There's, I, I've even seen fact, fact checks. and in, in fact, I posted them out. I just posted one on Twitter earlier. Uh, that was incorrect. You can buy those things. You can get machine guns, whatever people want to, all guns are machines if you ask me, but I guess they mean automatic weapons. So of course you have to go through approval for that kind of thing. Um, and then she says, if you're going to have that many guns, like I want to know that you have those, you know, who else wants to know the government that wants to take away all of your rights. They want to know exactly who has all of those mm -hmm. guns as well. Yeah. And in fact, they already do because you still got to go through background checks for all of these things in the first place. Okay. I know that there's not a national gun registry, I guess, or anything, but, um, like they don't have the data. There's no data apparently yeah. on this thing. Okay. So those are the view. We're still inside of a dumb bleep number two, Charlie called It's the Guns. Here's one uh, from whoever the heck this person is. Ukraine flag, American flag, rainbow flag. Uh, he tweets, I hope it was Republicans that lost their lives. One good thing about gun violence is occasionally wipes out a full Republican families in one fell swoop. I would like to thank congressional Republicans and the NRA. Yeah. That's great. Deserved it. That's great. Okay, that rounds out number two, it's the guns.